Tropical Storm Dorian continues into the Eastern Caribbean and is passing the Lesser Antilles still. It's moved further north thanks to a relocation of its centre and has, still has winds of 50 miles per hour and a pressure of 1,005 millibars, position 15.6 north, 62.1 west. CDPS is looking at Cabo Rojo right now in Puerto Rico for August 29th. This is the conditions expected there, stage 1 on the CDPS still, which is considered to be minor, but the rainfall amounts could be more than what we're currently expecting. Here's where the storm is right now then, uh, there it is in position on the track map there. Um, low damage potential as said, that could change very soon. It's got a fairly small wind field, which is certainly a help. It's 39 miles from Guadeloupe, 75 from Montserrat, 124 from St. Kitts, 227 from St. Croix, and 329 miles from San Juan in Puerto Rico. The latest National Hurricane Center update shows that hurricane watches are in effect for Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, from Isla Sayona to Samana, and tropical storm warning now in effect for Vieques, Culebra, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Those are new additions on top of the warnings that already existed beforehand. Warnings have been discontinued along most of the Lesser Antilles. Rainfall totals, looking at this, the pink areas show 3 inches of rain or higher, not much of it initially on the Greater Antilles, and then it, as it heads towards the Bahamas and onto Florida, that moisture really increases according to the GFS model, other models are hinting at more rain though, so certainly watch out, well, however much rain falls there's always that potential for flash flooding on any of these islands. Sea surface temperatures warm 28 degrees or higher at this point and that will continue all the way along its track. Here's what the GFS is showing for the next few days in terms of the wind speed. You can see a small green area there moving through Puerto Rico. That's tropical storm force winds and then it moves off towards the Bahamas. GFS I think still lowballing it a little bit Weakening it, weakening it completely, uh, but then redeveloping it into a tropical storm as it passes the northern Bahamas. And you can see it there at the top of the screen now moving into Florida as a strong tropical storm by the end of the weekend. Whether that happens or not is still somewhat uncertain, but confidence is starting to increase. Chances of tropical storm force winds, 71% at Mayaguez, 70%. At Punta Cana, 68% at Ponce, 54% at Coburn Town, and 52% at Eleuthera Island in the Bahamas. Here's what the models are saying. Uh, you can see there the National Hurricane Center, the grey line. That was before the latest update, which I believe has something rather similar. Um, the wind shear is going to rise a little bit now in the next 12 hours, um, but will still be mostly favourable. Sea surface temperature is very warm, relative humidity will start that slow climb as well. Um, and you can see there the track forecast is pretty close knit. Um, almost all of those models taking it into Florida north of Lake Okeechobee. Here's what the floaters are looking like right now and you can see that the storm really isn't looking as good as it did last night. The convection isn't quite as good um, and as you can see again it's a fairly small storm. It is growing slowly in terms of its size and in its wind field size um, but the convective activity has gone down a little bit. We might see some more blowing up overnight tonight and that will really show us whether it will intensify markedly before it reaches Puerto Rico. We really don't know yet, but odds are it will intensify a little bit more and we could be looking at potentially hurricane force gusts for Puerto Rico and the Eastern Dominican Republic, or at worst case scenario, hurricane force winds proper, a hurricane landfall. But for the time being, the storm is drawing nearer. You should be preparing for it. You should have prepared for it on many of those islands and stay tuned further on on the storm's track towards Florida. You can follow Force 13's outlets, the website force13.com. You can also find our YouTube channel if you're not there already. You may well be. Good chance of that. Subscribe if you haven't. You can also find our Facebook page, search Force 13 all in text, and our Twitter handle, it's at Force 13 on there. You can also help the project become even better by becoming a patron. You can see more information about all the benefits involved by visiting patreon.com forward slash force 13. With a special thanks to these people for being our most valued patrons this month. 
You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show Force 13's colours wherever you go. You can also find a link to our Discord server underneath this video in the description.